We're gonna cover that for number two. This is number three. That's another random ass video acting. You could call it a monologue Monday if you want. But here's the thing about acting. Again, you know, again, like being discovered is a difficult part. Getting work is the second part. And if you give up, you're never gonna know. And I have not given up in the 20 some odd plus years that I've been at this shit. Now, as you've seen, I could be a superhero or a supervillain. So, the thing is, like I said, getting discovered. And so, if you're from 9 9, I'm straight up supposed to be emailing them today, and I just didn't get around to it. But what I am going to do is I'm going to, um, going to push to um, make sure that they know anything come up Hasbro or um, superhero like Hasbro Marvel put my shit over there put my shit up for Hasbro or Marvel I know that the show Echo is coming so um, you know Echo Fan Grey Wolf could use a job I don't care what character you let me play as long as you let me play a character. I don't have to be in the show but one episode. I'm good with one episode. Just cut the check. Um, I want to be able to explore my native side. I want to be able to push my acting range, you know, a lot better than what I just did in those last two videos. And the thing about um, the distraction it is, you know, all I need is that one door open. Yeah, just that one door. I would have been a great Wyatt Wingfoot. One second. We're going to find out. How tall is the actress that plays She-Hawk? It's totally misspelled it. Okay. So... Tatiana Mussolini, I can't pronounce your name, Canadian actress, playing multiple characters in the fiction, Orphan Black. Um, okay, I'm pretty sure that this was Jennifer Walters. Yeah. And I did watch Orphan Black. Just to get that out of the way. So, Jennifer Walters, attorney at law, cousin of Bruce Banner. Yeah. Um, this is her. And there is one um, small differential. Because, <laughs> um, according to this, <laughs> um, She's five foot four. <laughs> I think it would have been a great couple if I would have been able to play Wyatt Wingfoot. Because I'm five three and a half, you know. So let's see. Oh, for the love of God. Um, what the hell is it? Yeah, pretty smile. I think I would have been a great Wyatt Wingfoot for her. Okay, that fucked it up. That was gargoyles. But I think we would have been a great couple. I could have been Wyatt Wingfoot. And then when she hawks out, it would equal out. Because hawks way taller than Wyatt Wingfoot. I know. You guys probably have no idea who the fuck Wyatt Wingfoot is. Marvel Comics Wyatt Wingfoot. Marvel Comics, Wyatt Wingfoot. Don't just a moment me. You Google. You're supposed to have all the answers. It's tripping. But Wyatt Wingfoot's a Native American from a Maple Leaf tribe. According to Wikipedia, Wyatt Wingfoot is a fictional supporting character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. While having no superpowers, he has spent much time in the company of the Fantastic Four due to his friendship with Human Torch and his relationship with occasional Fantastic Four member She-Hulk. Yeah. So if you guys chose to give her a season two, which would be great, especially since I haven't seen season one, 
I'd be coming in green, but, uh, no pun intended, I'd be coming in green, but I could be Wyatt Wingfoot. I'm not cutting my hair, though. There's Wyatt Wingfoot. Um, please forgive the background noise. Let's, uh, Wikipedia. Wyatt Wingfoot has no powers. Alright? So... He's cut. Yeah, I need to hit the gym a little bit, but I can get that. I, I, I can get that. And besides, TV's gonna make me look like I, I'm bigger than I actually am. So, yeah, I could be Wyatt Wingfoot. Marvel Comics American Eagle. According to Wikipedia, American Eagle is a Navajo superhero appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. I could be that. Of course, his OG suit, which was some shit I never understood, is how the fuck this Wyatt Wingfoot, I mean, excuse me, American Eagle, have a crossbow instead of a bow and arrow. Let's see if they show it. There it is. Now, I don't recall um, Native Americans using crossbows. So that's like a big fat fuck you on um, that one because um, I know Native Americans use bow and arrows. I never ever heard of Natives using crossbows. He has a crossbow. Now he has magical powers though. So um, I don't like that suit. I love that suit with the war bonnet. But I still never understood why he had a crossbow. Now, um, we can go to, um, his, um, Wikipedia, and we can give y'all a rough house description. I fucked up. American Eagle, Marvel Comics. Because this way I can give you According guys According to name. Wikipedia, American Eagle is a Navajo superhero appearing in American comic. Sorry. So... He's a Navajo superhero appearing in American comics produced by Marvel. Um, characters by His name is Jason Strongbow. I had it at the top of my head. I just couldn't remember it. Um, <clears throat> he's a Navajo from Arizona. All right. Funny how he's a Navajo from Arizona. And I'm pretty sure the Proud Star Brothers are Apaches from around that same area. So um, he has an enemy named Claw. I don't remember if it's Ulysses Claw or not. I'm pretty sure it's Ulysses Claw, because it says so right there. Now, um, Wyatt Wingfoot, um, his powers is magic, all right? Uh, not Wyatt Wingfoot, sorry, Jason Strongbow, emerged from the mine, taking inspiration from a flying eagle, who started calling himself American Eagle. Now, not to be mistaken, I say Wyatt Wingfoot, because Wyatt Wingfoot's name is in this damn thing right here, but, um... Where the hell is it? It does say how he got his powers. Him and his brother were in a cave, and he got, like, magical powers. So his powers are magic. Um, trying to find the shit. Okay, powers and abilities. American Eagle possesses superhuman strength, which enables him to lift and press a maximum of 15 tons. Under optimal conditions, he has also possessed superhuman speed, agility, stamina and sturdiness as a result of radiation-introduced mutation. Strongbow's body tissue is somewhat harder than most resistant to physical injuries than an ordinary human being. However, he is, as far in, he is far from invulnerable. He also can be injured by weapons composed of continental metals. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway... He can withstand impact forces and several injuries or kill normal human beings. With a little to no injury show for it, he can also a maximum speed of 65 miles per hour, approximately five hours before trending in capability. American Eagle sensory organs have been fortified with radiation-induced mutation. Like his um, namesake, the Eagle, he is... Um, Hyper keen eyesight and able to see up to 800 feet, 240 m. I have no idea what that is. 
but the average human is see 20 feet. 6.1 miles. His senses of hearing, taste, and smell approximately three times. And this shit does not say how he got his fucking powers, because his powers is magic. So obviously something's been retconned. Um, but American Eagle's a bad motherfucker. I would love to play American Eagle. Now, I'm um, not too fond of the next person I'm going to ask for. I don't hate him, but um, before I um, call him on Wikipedia, he's a handicapped person, and he fell off the scaffolding in New York. But his power is also magic, I think, and he thinks he's dreaming all the things he's doing, and that would be Jesse Blackcrow. Marvel Comics' Jesse Blackcrow. According to Wikipedia, Black Crow is a fictional Native American superhero appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Now, I like his outfit. I don't have the body for it, but I like his outfit. Yeah. Which is why I would much rather wear um, American Eagle's outfit. Because at least that covers up some stuff. But Jesse Black Crow's outfit has not changed in like years so his code name is black crow by the way but his real name is jesse black crow i don't know why i used to think his name was jonathan black crow but it's jesse black crow so let's see if we can go back and hit his wikipedia and hit his wikipedia all right black crow aka jesse black crow is a fictional native american superhero published by marvel comics all right so Jesse Black Crow is a member of the Navajo Nation, and he was traditionally a great, his great-grandfather was a healer. Um, Jesse left his New Mexico reservation to New York City, where he had the accident, he plunged to the ground. He survived, but falls permanently paralyzed from the waist down. Comatose in the hospital, Jesse received a vision from the spirit of the earth, showing him the plight of the Native American people. When needed, the spirit transforms Jesse into Black Crow, a mysterious warrior to protect his people. Jesse does not know that his body is being used as the host of Black Crow Entity. When Jesse transforms into Black Crow, he is merely unconscious passenger left in the vow. <laughs> Reflecting the scene's dysfunction of Jesse and his thinks that he's slowly going insane. I could play this guy. I could play this guy. But the main my main um Reserves is because I, I deal with handicapped people on my cleaning job. And I don't want to think that um, I'm insulting them. I'm also kind of slightly superstitious. He also dealt with the rear skull. But um, I'm slightly superstitious because of what happened to Christopher Reed when he played a handicapped person. And then he became handicapped dealing with shit happening here in Virginia at whatever horse races that he was involved in. So I'm kind of, kind of superstitious about that. And... um. You know, at the same time, Jesse Black Crow is a very interesting character because he's he's like he's he's not insane, but he thinks he's going insane because he has these memories, but to him, it's a dream. But his body is being used by a Native American spirit named Black Crow, who is doing all this heroic shit. And Jesse, you guys remember? Um, God damn it, Legion! You guys remember Legion? It's kind of like that, only with a Native American in a wheelchair and no mutant powers. You know, because to Jesse Black Crow, everything seems like a dream. But the reality is, he's actually doing the shit, but he just doesn't remember doing it other than it being a dream. So can you imagine being out there saving people, knowing that you're literally in a wheelchair from the waist down and you can't do anything. But when you're needed, you just, you're sitting there and then your body's gone and then you're like saving people and shit. And then while you're saving people, um, you're literally dreaming that you are saving people instead of actually thinking or knowing that it's you. As far as the comic no goes. I don't recall him ever discovering that it's not a dream. And I think he continued to think that it was a dream for quite some time. But he's a very interesting character. 
Now, the next character that I would love to play is Red Wolf. But there's three of them. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna go to to them. Alright. It's supposed to be three of them. There's um Wild Drum, Red Wolf of the nineteenth century in the Wild West, and order in order of the Cheyenne have the place to live. Uh, he drove the Sioux away in the plains of Cain the Conqueror. The only man he has who, to ever have defeated him in battle. As a result, Wild Run swore loyalty to Cain and became a member of the personal guard and the astronauts in the Avengers Forever Libra. To somehow know Wild Run is described him as the first of the Red Wolves. All right. And Wild Run doesn't really have a um, name. But he pretty much became Kane the Conqueror's bitch. That's pretty much what that says. Uh, then there's Johnny White Wakely. Johnny Wakely was adopted the name by... Uh, was adopted... Is his adopted name of a Cheyenne man who was raised from childhood as a white couple's child. Kind of reflects what's going on today with Iqua, right? So let's try that again. Johnny Wakely was the adopted name of a Cheyenne man who was raised by childhood by a white couple in the 19th century. His adopted parents were killed by Native Americans, which is really fucked up, in um, retaliation for the U.S. Army Cavalry Massacre of their own people. Sometime later, the land baron tries to buy Whiskey's property when Johnny refuses to sell the land baron hires guns to burn down the house trying to find a place in the world. Johnny joined the U.S. Cavalry at Fort Rango as a scout, but although he accepted becoming a commander officer, he found himself stunned and displaced by the soldiers while on a scouting mission, he finds a renegade Indian war party. Johnny presenting himself was accidentally given away in pursuit of the warriors. Wakely stumbled into a burial place and the formerly known as the Red Wolf was visited by the spirit of the Cheyenne God known as I cannot pronounce that, but I'm going to spell it for you. O-W-A-Y-O-D-A-T-A. -A -A. It was given him a ceremonial guard of the Red Wolf and a couple of sticks and a cope stick, his totem, and the power to become the first known Red Wolf. Red Wolf is used and found great skills and possessed to promote peace between the white and the native people. He fought and defeated Ursa, the bear man, man bear, and Devil Rider. I'm not sure who Devil Rider is. Later, John Weekly teamed up with Rawhide Kid, Colt Kid, Doc Holliday, Annie Oakley, Billy the Kid, and the Two Gun Kid to track down the villainous Cristo Pike. After Pike and his gang kidnapped Wyatt and Morgan Earp. Okay. So that's way back in the West. I really don't think I want to do that. But I can see myself being Johnny Wakely. Because he's still Cheyenne, but he was adopted by white people and raised by white people. So that's kind of fucking crazy. Uh, Thomas Thunderhead. Thomas Thunderhead is the Red Wolf during the pre-modern pre area in the 70s. He helped the police officer Jill Tomahawk together battle the King Cycle. Excuse me, King Circle. No cycle, King Cycle. And later Clayton Brickfor. Red Wolf also assisted Gabriel, Devil Hunter, and Dragonfly. I don't know who they are. And then there's William William Talltrees. Not to be mistaken with um Shaman. Alright? Because his name is Michael. Two young men. Alright? And I probably said that wrong, but we can, we can address that. Uh, William Talltrees was born in the modern times, born to Wolf Point, Montana. He was the son of Rebecca and Thomas Talltree, a Cheyenne tribal leader who grew up hearing tales of the legendary Red Wolf. William witnessed his father being intimidated to sell his property to corrupt businessman Cornelius Van Loot. Van Lott and his enforcer, Jason Birch. That night, Van Lott and Birch kidnapped and killed William's family. William swore revenge, finding the, 
binding and donning the ceremonial guard of the Red Wolf. The same God visited him and enabled the young man with the spiritual legacy granted to the superhuman powers. The new Red Wolf found a wolf cub that he named Lobo. So I could be William, because I like the wolf cub story with Lobo, and trained his companion to be um, following the two criminals back to New York. He was able to gain vengeance on them with the aid of the Avengers, alongside Tigra, Red Wolf Battle, Super Scroll, and the Rat Pack, alongside Phantom Rider 3, Firebird, Texas Twister, and Shooting Star, he battled the Hawk. Rescuing Rick Jones from the Corruptor, Red Wolf joined these four heroes as part of the first incarnation of the short-lived superhero team, the Rangers. Alongside the Defenders, Red Wolf battled some trolls. Alongside the Rangers, against, again, Red Wolf, and the West Coast Avengers, while under the influence of demons, something or another, possessing Shooting Star. So, as it goes on and on, I have options. William Talltrees, Thomas Thunderhead, John Wakely, and Wild Run. Now, I don't think there was another one. No, there was not another one. But you get the gist. He's a native. They're all natives. They're all Cheyenne. I'm not Cheyenne, but I'll play a Cheyenne on TV as long as I get to talk to somebody of the Cheyenne diaspora to make sure I don't fuck this shit up. And that goes for the same thing for the Navajo if I get to play uh, Jesse Black Crow or American Eagle. Same thing for the Apache if I was blessed enough to play James or John Proudstar. Let's go to a bad guy. Marvel Comics Scalp Hunter. According to Wikipedia, Scalp Hunter is a fictional mutant villain character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Scalp Hunter's real name is John Greycrow. He's a fictional mutant villain. So I could be him. Watch out, X Men. He's a marauder. And Sabretooth was once his bitch. I just want to point that out. Before the retconning of Sabretooth. Because Sabretooth wasn't actually a part of Weapon X. Until they retconned this shit. Because they wanted to imagine with Wolverine. That's for those who do not know about comics in the 80's. Sabretooth was definitely Scout Puncher's bitch. He was a marauder first. Alright. Scout Puncher is a Comanche tribe. Native American. Who originally fought in World War II. So that should tell you that he's old as shit. Alright? But because of his mutants, mutant ability, he didn't age. Like, at all. Alright? So, um... He was executed for murdering his fellow officers. He was shot by a firing squad and believed dead. However, he survived and um, found the recruiting enigmatic mastermind for Mr. Sinister. And later, appeared to be under Sinister, he killed the employees of the Savage Mutant Sabretooth. Okay? He killed the employer of the Savage Mutant Sabretooth and offered Sabretooth money to join Scalp Hunter's boss as a mercenary. See? Sabretooth was with South Scalp Hunter. Sabretooth was Scalp Hunter's bitch. I'm telling y'all, y'all don't have to believe that shit. Later years, he meets Gambit. He became a marauder and all kinds of other shit. So, we're going to go with Puma now. Marvel Comics Puma. Also a bad guy. According to Wikipedia, Puma is a character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Puma's one of Spider-Man's enemies. And now we're going to go to his Wikipedia. Puma, American Comics, uh, by Thomas Diego something or other. Puma's um, real name is Thomas Fireheart, Native American who was bred to be the perfect warrior, prophesied, stop the future threat that might destroy the world, gaining the ability to transform into a humanoid mountain lion or werecat at will. 
He later became a businessman and a CEO of Fireheart Enterprises. It's kind of like the same story as uh, Namor. He's a mutant. Um, he has team affiliation with the Daily Bugle, so him and Jameson probably get along very well. Let's go his abilities. Extraordinary. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Skilled businessman. Accessory to high village technology. Uses personal circumstances. Learjet. As Puma. Superhuman strength. Speed. Agility. Superhuman stamina. Durability. Flexibility. Reflexibility. Intelligence. Coordination. Balance. Endurance. Superhumanity. Acute senses. And razor sharp claws and fangs. So, um... Let's see, what tribe does he come from? He's a Native American ascendant that belongs to a tribe located near Hartsdale, New Mexico. I don't think it gave him a specific tribe. I'm pretty sure it did. I just have to read further in. Um, his ancestors belong to the tribe of the Lost Mesa. And his ancient prophecy of becoming a powerful being who would destroy the world from generations long ago. He began making preparations for the coming doom. They used the ceremonies to selective breeding and generate the perfect warrior. Thomas Fireheart is the latest in the line of men. Though he never believed in the, in the prophecy, he took the duties of the protector of his tribe seriously. And he strided his whole life to be the best that he could be. Mastering agility and turning into a powerful humanoid mountain lion weircat he is also trained in martial arts in Japan under the name of Master Muramoto. I do not know who that is. Anyway, Jessa, did you know he's a native, he has a company, and he's a badass. Now, I don't know what that has to do with Black Cat or the Rose, because I think the Rose is um Wilson Fisk kid. Who else do I need? Shaman. In case you're wondering, I haven't done any um, female characters. Oh, this shit is still listening to me. <laughs> Marvel Comics Shaman from Alpha Flight. Michael Two Young Men Shaman. According to Marvel, Michael Two Young Men Shaman. With a mystical pouch, medical doctor Michael Two Young Men transforms into the powerful Sarsi sorcerer known as Shaman and joins Canada's heroic Alpha Flight. Now, I like that outfit. Focus. I like that outfit. I like that outfit. And his daughter's in the bubble. Wow, what's his name? It's Choking Snowbird. Uh... I want to say Vindicator, but uh, sometimes Vindicator and, um, what the hell's the other name? Heather and James team to take, take places a lot. Vindicator and whatever the hell the other name is. So let's go to Wikipedia. Dr. Michael Two Young Men, fictional superhero. We're going to see what nation he belongs to because I know he's First Nation. Film biology, fictional biology. Michael T. Youngman is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. He is a member of the First Nations, specifically T-S-U-U, -U, space, capital T, with expert, with the, like, apostrophe, and T-I-N-A. I do not know how to say this. They are the Askapathian group. Um, part of the more northern Dane Dean Beaver Indians. Yeah, I can't pronounce that shit, y'all. I'm gonna spell it for you, though. A T H A B A S K A N. I'm pretty sure that I butchered that trying to say it, but they are native. And like I said, they are he's of the First Nation, so it could be anything. I know he's not a jib boy. So it's also the Dane Zaza. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ. Dinza. You know what? Let me spell that for y'all. D U N N E hyphen or dash Z A or T S A T T I N E. Y'all go figure that shit out. But anyway, he's a native superhero known as Shaman. He is a First Nations. So if they make an out-flight movie, I'm available. Now granted, they're going to have to do some adjusting on my height. Alright, because I'm exceptionally short. And we all know the Scout Puncher is at least six feet tall. Puma is at least six feet tall. Um, we're going to solve this problem. How tall are the Native American characters in Marvel Comics? All of them. Yeah, that didn't help one bit. How tall are Marvel Comics? Why? Did you not understand what I said? Spider-Man's 5'10". Captain Marvel's 5'7". War Machine's 6 foot. Hawk's 5'8". Hawk's not 5'8", unless it's, um... Uh, what the fuck is his name? Amadeus Cho. Alright, let's try this one more time. What is the height of all male Native American characters in Marvel Comics? Yeah. Let's go to this fandom. Hold on. Native 616 characters... Just give me the height. Okay, I don't even know who the hell that is. It's a female. She's five feet tall. This might take forever. Because it's too much like right to um. Just give me one guy and then say view more. Okay, apparently her name is Native. Because we're at the bottom of the thing. Which goes back to I've never heard of her. Real name unrevealed. Alias is Native. She's feral. Unborn child, pro pro presumably dead. Uh, I guess she's affiliated with Wolverine. Alright, let's try this one more time. How tall is Scout Puncher from Marvel Comics? Scout Puncher is six foot six. Alright. And they won't give me more. Because you know, like if you ask for like the other um characters, they will give you the height. Like if I ask for how tall the rock is, the rock is like six five, and it would give me the next wrestler and the next wrestler. But for some reason, Wikipedia is not doing that. Okay, when the hell did that happen? I clearly missed that. Apparently, Psylocke and Grey Crow had a relationship. Damn it all. If I didn't want to know, it would give me what I want. How tall is Forge from the X-Men? Forge is six foot even. How tall is Shaman? From Alpha Flight. Shaman is 5'10. How tall is the supervillain Puma from Marvel Comics? Puma is not 35 feet in height. What the fuck, yo? Let's click on this Wikipedia, because I'm pretty sure his Wikipedia doesn't give me his height either. Yeah, sure as fuck does not. How tall is Warpath and Thunderbird from the X-Men? Okay. Warpath is 7'2". Still says he's 7'2". Doesn't tell me how tall John is. Okay, let's see. 
And it still doesn't say how tall John is. Okay. How tall is Thunderbird from the X-Men? According to writeups.org, no okay. relatives, Neil Proudstar, Maria Proudstar, James Proudstar, group affiliation, X-Men, base of operations, Professor Xavier's school, height, 6 feet 2 inches weight, 225 pounds. And that would be John Proudstar. He's six foot two. How tall is Forge from the X Men? Forge is six foot even. Okay. How tall is American Eagle from the Marvel Comics? Six feet. According to Marvel Directory, in the course of the battle, Strongbow's brother Ward, who had allied himself with Claw, was killed by one of the miner's bullets. American Eagle has since returned to his people to be their champion. Height, six feet. How tall is Wyatt Wingfoot from Marvel Comics? According to Marvel Database, Fandom, while official handbook of the Marvel Universe A to Z update number one claims Wyatt is six feet five inches, in Fantastic Four number 61, his height was stated to be six foot six. Yeah, that's a big change for Wyatt Wingfoot. So that kind of squashed everything I said at the beginning. How tall is Jesse Black Crow from Marvel Comics? It is not giving me. Okay, he's six foot one, 190 pounds. Some tall ass native characters, right? Yeah, gonna have to do some retconning on the hype if I'm ever to play a Native American in the Marvel Universe. Anyhow, I hope I taught you guys something, and we've done a tiny bit of research here. But yeah, you know, if I could just get work, you know, I don't have a problem playing a Native. Let's do this shit. I even have my own bow and arrow. The bow's over there. So it can be done. There are some natives that I left off that were like normal, but I forgot their names, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, if you're listening, Marvel, I'm ready. And 99, if you're listening, hook me up with Hasbro so I can play a native, or hook me up with Marvel so I can play a native. But I really want to get hooked up with Sony so I can play Miguel O'Hara. But that's technically Miguel O'Hara is native because he's Mexican. Let's test that theory. What is the ethnic background of Spider-Man 2099? Here is some information for Spider-Man 2099 backstory. According to Comic Basics, Spider-Man 2099 was created by Peter David and Rick Leonardi. He first appeared in full inside the pages of Spider-Man 2099 number one back in November of 1992. Miguel O'Hara was raised in an alternate dimension to the normal Earth 616. In this dimension, the year was 2099 and the Age of Heroes had more or less ended. But, you didn't give us the ethnic background. What is Miguel O'Hara's racial background in Spider-Man 2099 comics? According to Fox News, in Spider-Man 2099, the wall crawler was Miguel O'Hara, a geneticist of Mexican and Irish descent. Are Mexicans indigenous to the Americas? According to Wikipedia, most Mexicans identify as mestizo, have very large amounts of indigenous ancestry, are of Amerindian phenotypes, race, but are culturally assimilated to Latin European ideologies such as mestizaje and therefore do not identify as culturally or politically indigenous peoples of Mexico. Yeah, but that wasn't the question. Why are Mexicans not um, considered to be native? You never gave a straight answer, yes or no. Are Mexicans Native Americans? Maybe I should have asked that. Let's 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 ask that. 
are Mexicans Native Americans? According to We Are Native, so to give you a straight answer, yes, Mexican tribes are native to the Americas, but the governments of the U.S. and Mexico define their citizenry according to their country of residence. Therefore, what I just said about Miguel O'Hara being Mexican as well as being Irish would technically make him indigenous. Are Mexicans concluded as indigenous? I did not say polluted. God damn it. Can we... Do God damn it. <laughs> Can we include Mexicans as indigenous to America? Literally. It took me right back. Could Miguel O'Hara from Spider-Man 2099 be considered indigenous since he is part Mexican? According to Wikipedia, his real identity is Miguel O'Hara, a brilliant Irish-Mexican geneticist living in Nueva York in the year 2099 who attempts to recreate the abilities of the original Spider-Man and other people and later suffers a related accident that causes half of his DNA to be rewritten with a spider's genetic code. Watch this. Let me blow your mind really quick. Why does Miguel O'Hara not have a spider sense? According to Wikipedia, unlike the original Spider-Man, Miguel does not possess an extra sensory spider sense that warns him of oncoming threats. Instead, Miguel possesses enhanced vision and hearing, which the original Spider-Man does not have. Yeah. What is Miguel O'Hara's hologram name? According to Vulture, Miguel's constant companion is an intelligent hologram named Lila, short for L.Y. Raid Life Form Approximation. After the narration box appears, we see Lila talking to an unseen Miguel about him performing an interdimensional leap. Miguel converses with her, and you may find his voice familiar. Okay. So, yeah. This is my push for me to play Miguel O'Hara. So, you guys see my suit. It's literally... Right there. I literally am part native, part black and part white. I can do this. The tiny, tiny hiccup is that I am not five foot ten. Watch this. Damn you. How tall is Miguel O'Hara Spider Man twenty ninety nine? Five feet ten inches, according to some information I found on Spider Man Wiki fandom. How does the Spider-Man 2099 saga end? According to Weird Science Marvel Comics, Spider-Man 2099, Exodus Omega ends the series with a knockdown dragout fight between Norman Osborn and the forces of the Cabal in Spider-Man 2099 and the X-Men 2099, with a little help from Ghost Rider 2099. And it left off the rest, which goes Doom which Doom sacrifices himself for the survival of mankind. In the later one, One Shot 2099 Manifest Destiny, Social rebuilds the Phalanx in Vision. Miguel reopens Alchemax and marries Zina. That would be his Chinese girlfriend. The one he left for his brother's girlfriend. It, 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 who dies. Sorry. I probably shouldn't have did that for y'all. Um, let's see. What else can we learn about Miguel O'Hara in the 928? What happens to the other Miguel O'Hara not from the 928? According to Marvel Database, fandom, however, Miguel didn't return to his timeline but ended up in a world devastated by Alchemax and ruled by the Maestro, who mistook Miguel for the original Spider-Man. The maestro beat Miguel into submission, and then placed him in a cell with Strange 2099. How many Miguel O'Hara's are there? Okay, so Marvel Fandom Database. 
Miguel O'Hara after Miguel Fiera while Miguel was trapped in Earth 616's apartment in 2099. Uh, let me click on this video. Let's see, it doesn't doesn't play anything. Maybe I asked the question wrongly. I do like this suit though. I mean it's like literally right over there, minus the thing on the back. But I really, really like the other suit. And now the video. That's Shazam on a loop. You don't want to play that. Okay. That's fucking awesome. So you get a better look at that. Let's see. I'm going to ask the question properly now. I like that seat. That's the one I want. How many alternate timelines is there in Miguel O'Hara? Yeah, so you have 928 and Earth 299. Miguel O'Hara, Earth 299. What the fuck? I think that, yeah. This place, Earth 2099. Um, his eyes are green. Get off of Shazam. It's a good movie, okay? Secret Identity. Ah, uh, this motherfucker. Go back. Uh oh. Uh, what the frack? I don't know what I did, but I totally screwed this up. Okay. Let's try that again. I clicked the secret identity and everything went to hell in a handbasket. Okay. Origin, human mutate, status alive. Earth 2099. Um, let's go more. American. Former vigilante. Okay. So. Spider-Man 2. Miguel O'Hara. Miguel O'Hara. Earth 928 is the one we're most familiar with. Alright. I'm going to try this one more time. How many different Miguel O'Hara's are there in Marvel Comics? And again, it took me back. How many Spider-Man 2099's are there? Let's go there. Character created right, in 1992. Marvel 2099, Long the Futuristic. That's not giving me shit other than the number of issues. May 1, Spider-Man 2099. I know that there's at least two or three more Miguel O'Hara's. No. The main one is from Nueve, where he became an exile and all that other shit. But I know there are two, at least two more. Because one of them is an old man. Alright, let's try that. Old man Miguel O'Hara. It still won't give me what I'm asking for. Keeps taking me back to the Marvel database fandom, but it's not giving me shit. Okay. So this Miguel O'Hara is from Earth 96943. He doesn't fare very well. And that's kind of what I was asking them for. How many different Miguel O'Hara's? Because the 928 Miguel gets um, Mjolnir. At the end, I'm pretty sure, because Captain America gives it to him. And that's when he reopens Alchemex, because he is um, 
the son of um, the leader of Alchemex. But I don't know why this comic won't um, give me the shit. But this is where he also has the hammer and the new suit. And the new suit, I believe, came from Earth 616. But I'm not going to swear to it. Um, let me see if we can find the other one. Because Miguel, Miguel does um, get to be... Um, he gets the hammer by the end of the shit. Because he is worthy and he brings civilization back to its um its rightful standing or whatever. Alright. Let's see. Miguel O'Hara, Earth 29-8. We know that he's the main one. Because he's a human mutate. He drank his serum. Um, he's currently displaced in the 616. Killed by a brainwash. Cause of death. That's Tempest Monroe. Uh, Strange 2099. There's a lot of stuff with Miguel O'Hara that they don't um, have. Uh, Pace's base, Miguel O'Hara's apartment in Manhattan, New York City. Uh, United Earth, Earth 2019, Earth 2001 AD, Alchemax, um, and Earth 2099 AD. So, let's try to make this simple. Which Miguel O'Hara was a member of the Exiles? Exiles. Which Miguel O'Hara was the member of? Okay. Miguel O'Hara, Earth 6375, database fandom. I'm pretty sure this might not be right. But we're going to click on it because it says Miguel O'Hara, Earth six. Three seven five. Doctor Miggy. Miggy O'Hara. Miguel Miggy O'Hara. Currently, alias Spider Man. Alias Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Mikey, Swall Crawler, Spidey. Former Exiles, Alchemist, and Hydra Earth seventeen twenty. All right. Parents. I'm sorry, I still laugh at her name. Conchita O'Hara. Father, Tyler Stone. Sibling, Gabriel O'Hara. Because technically, Miguel is Tyler Stone's child. Pronounce, pronounce, pronounce canine teeth, fangs, etc. But that seems to be the whole thing over the entire timelines. Reality Earth 6375. Um... Place of death, New York City, Earth, New York, 2014. Yeah, so, um, there are other Miguel O'Hara's, just like there are other Spider-Man. But the main continuity, Miguel O'Hara's, Earth, 928. Miguel O'Hara from Earth, 928, does he get a happy ending? The process sabotaged by Supervisor Anton and it attempted to kill him accidentally would cover up and Miguel survived. Miguel O'Hara Spider Wiki Fandom. Marvel just gave Spider Man twenty ninety nine his happy ending sort of. Let's read that, shall we? Marvel gave Marvel just gave Spider Man twenty ninety nine his happy ending. An Amazing Spider-Man 36 adds up the happy ending for Miguel O'Hara and Spider-Man 2099. Meanwhile, 2099 Omega Heads at a new beginning. 
warning, the following contains spoiler alerts for The Amazing Spider-Man um, 36. So Gail O'Hara, a.k.a. Spider-Man 2099, alongside the converter fueled by the anger and regret and heartbreak of multiple realities, lies hasn't exactly always got a great to be Spider-Man in the future. Since his introduction in 1992, he was consoling the Marvel 2099 event. However, Miggy, as many found his happy ending, or at least one version of him has. Come on, get rid of that. Um, with his time period being destroyed before his um, very eyes, Miguel popped in and out of resistant issues of Spider-Man, of the Amazing Spider-Man, attempting to enlist help from Peter Parker. God damn it! How did this happen? Get off of Iron Man. What the fuck? I don't know how to fix it. I just got to let it play out. Oh, so I can read at the bottom. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Everything went away. Let's try again. Where was I? Or at least one version. While his time period had being destroyed. Okay, we got all that. Attempting to enlist to help us be the Parker, but Miguel unable to get his bearings as his grip on reality slips away. He is essentially becoming lost in time. It changes, however, with the Amazing Spider-Man 36 in which Miguel finally finds some solid ground. Alright. Peter, semi-successful, gets Dr. Doom to increase, in case his assault, to cease his assault on the United States and, however... Return to Liberia, Miguel finds himself washed up on a beach, unsure where he is, and he he sheds together Spider-Man mask, his tattered Spider-Man mask, vulnerable head. Before too long, he happens upon a community in which it includes none other than his former lover, Tempest Monroe, and their infant son, Gabriel. That's not the Miguel that I like, but okay. As most recent Spider-Man 2099 ongoing series, Peter David Artist, um, The Temple included, concluded in 2017, left Miguel O'Hara's and Tempest in a different place. Tempest had um, been brainwashed into killing Miguel, who transported back to his own time and revived the Strange, revived by Strange, and at this time at midnight to strike the New Year, signing. The beginning of the new year, twenty one hundred. However, Miguel was informed that he would not be able to go back in time to where his girlfriend and their unborn son. <sighs> girl born, uh, girlfriend and unborn son, as doing so could future could cause a future to be destroyed. Because of this version of the future now has been destroyed, any of their, anyway, there doesn't appear to be anything standing between the way Miguel and Tempest happily ever after on the present Earth Day of 616. Marvel officially reveals this is a spoiler one in the future, so that it's alright, but Miguel and Tempest have been reunited and they raised Gabriel together. All is well that ends well, except not, except not, especially in the edition of Spider-Man 36. There's also a new one-shot Spider-Man, one-shot 2099 Omega. While one Miguel is apparently at the end of his journey, for now, another Miguel is only beginning his journey. While Miguel 2099 was lost in a new version of Marvel's future form and the place has served as getting set for a new event. And this new version of 2099 comes with, you guessed it, a new version of Miguel O'Hara. Probably introduced to readers recently to Spider-Man 2099 one-shot. The new version of Miguel O'Hara started off as rather a the bad way. 
he's still under the thumb of Alchemax, still addicted to the Rapture, and has not yet become Spider-Man. When the one shot concludes, however, he meets someone he didn't expect, an elderly version of himself. Okay? With the Amazing Spider-Man 36 and 2099 Omega being released currently, concurrently, it is clear that they've just knew that this version of Miguel O'Hara will reunite with Tempest and the old man and will see pay a visit to the younger self. Oh crap. Younger self are on the same in the same. While the old Miguel will be a was able to find his way back to the woman he loves. And he also lived long enough to see the new version of twenty ninety nine and is exactly it's not exactly a pretty sight. Alchemax and the other Omega corporations once persuaded over the world. The privileged new life in the higher New Ray New York while Tortoise is left ravaged and rending themselves. Humanities have left the younger younger Miguel's brother Gabriel O'Hara tries to lend a hand but can only do so much. Younger Miguel has files that complain the Alchemax crimes of the mass and refuses to release them. Out of fear of his own life, Gabriel then takes the matters into his own hands, mimicking his older brother's appearance and genetic code in order to share the damaging information in the world gathering himself. <sighs> in other words, the alternative version or not, old Miguel has watched his brother, who has a son named he was named his son for as he died. Knowing full well whether nothing can be do with, do about it. In spite of their sorrow, however, he leaves the glimmering hope, telling younger Miguel he must follow in his own footsteps to become Spider Man. While young Miguel identifies refusing seeing his brother meet his end and nothing will do a warning, he helps people give him back. He helps give him kick in the right direction. He needs to help step up into the machine. So one that he made ah sorry. One he had hunted his dreams and obviously known or unknown to receive his powers. As a splash page homage homage to his transformation in the from ninety two's original Spider Man twenty ninety nine beat. Miguel O'Hara, we now, nah, damn it, we know and love, got his happy ending he deserves at least one while, at least one, at least for a little while, while, but there is still work to be done in 2099. <sighs> still needs a Spider Man, arguably now more than ever. As for the future holes, the new Spider Man of tomorrow will have to wait to see. Amazing Spider-Man 36, 2099 Omega, and Marvel has destroyed, rebuilt the wildest future. Alright, so my reading fucked it up, but you guys get the gist. But at the end of the original, Miguel does get his shit together, and he does get to marry uh, Zena. How do you say Miguel O'Hara's wife's name? How do you say Spider-Man Miguel O'Hara's wife's name? He did not marry Aunt May. What in the fuck? Not Mary Jane, that's the wrong Spider-Man. What is Spider-Man 2099's wife's name? According to Marvel, Dana D'Angelo and Zena Kwan are the on-again-off-again romantic partners in Miguel's life. 
They both support him but experience jealousy towards one another, and eventually Dana dies saving Xena in battle against Venom 2099. Now y'all caught that, right? Dana dies saving Xena. Xena winds up marrying Miguel. Okay? So... As adults, Miguel and Xena dated seriously until Miguel cheats on her with Dana D'Angelo, who originally is the girlfriend of Miguel's brother Gabe. Later, Miguel and Dana are engaged. Dana ass dies. Alright? Is Spider Man 2099 married? Miguel O'Hara saves the future of 2099, manifest destiny. At the center of this story, Miguel O'Hara, excuse me, Spider-Man 2099 had become the future main hero. Having married his friend, Xena, Miguel also meets and receives Steve Rogers. What the fuck does that mean? Meets and receives Steve Rogers. Don't y'all mean meet the ham, get the, meet Steve Rogers and gets the hammer from him? Zena Kwan. Um, Miguel O'Hara is from is far from innocent in the youth as Peter Parker, but the first big clue is that he was dating a girl named Zena Kwan. Okay. God damn it, that went completely in a different direction. Spider Man twenty nine nine meets Spider Man and the two main heroes switch places as Miguel waking up next to Mary Jane. All right, we all know how that worked out. This shit that went everywhere but where it was supposed to go. Anyway, you got all that. So, Mary Jane. This went back to Spider-Man instead of Spider-Man 2099. So, on that note, I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys for watching. I am Echo Fang Great Wolf. I know I took way too much of your time today. But um, I will probably make more videos tonight. Thanks for watching. You seeing me.